So in the previous two videos, we've developed the general solution to Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates. And we found that it looks as follows. So this depends on two numbers, L and M. It's a function of R, theta, and phi. The R dependence was the solution to a Cauchy-Euler differential equation and had this form where here A and B are constants to be determined and we've added a subscript because we're eventually going to need to superimpose these solutions. The uh, theta dependence, so the azimuthal angle dependence was encoded by the uh, Legendre polynomial PML cosine theta and the polar angle dependence, the phi dependence was encoded in a superposition of trigonometric functions where CM and DM are constants that we determined and we added the uh, subscripts because we're going to superimpose these solutions. Okay, so this is the form of the infinitely many uh, solutions to Laplace's equation. So remember by superposition, if you add all of these up, it's, it's still a solution to Laplace's equation. And as was the case with all uh, the other coordinate systems we've considered, to be able to satisfy uh, some of the boundary conditions, you're going to need to superimpose these solutions. So you're going to need to build a function out of these solutions that can satisfy that boundary condition. And we'll call that simply U R phi. This will involve a double sum because we have two numbers. Remember by the restrictions of the Legendre polynomial PML, L has to start at zero and can go up to infinity whereas M can go from minus L up until L inclusively, again, because of the restrictions of how the Legendre polynomials are defined. We have a radial dependence or azimuthal angle dependence. P and our polar angle dependence. Okay, so this is our general solution to Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates. And in this video, we'll go through an example to see how we can use this uh, to solve a problem in electrostatics. So the example we're gonna consider is the following. Uh, it turns out that Laplace's equation also applies to uh, the case of an electrostatic potential. So the Laplacian of an electrostatic potential is equal to zero. And in this particular case, we want to find the potential inside and outside of a hollow split conducting sphere of radius A with the following boundary conditions. So because it's a split sphere, the top has a different potential. It has a potential V naught and the bottom part of the sphere has a potential of zero. And in this video, we'll go uh, we'll break this up into two cases. In this video, we'll, go, we'll consider the first case of uh, being inside of the sphere. So in this case, and then the next video, we'll look at what happens outside of the sphere. Uh, right away, we can start to simplify our general solution by, by noting that there is no phi dependence at all in our boundary condition. So there's uh, what we call as axial symmetry. So 
that means that there's no phi dependence. Um, we can set m is equal to zero because that will, uh, yeah, that will get rid of any any phi dependence that will make our differential equation for phi just equal to zero, so as a constant. Or if our trigonometric functions will just be uh, equal to a constant. And that means that we can simplify the Lachan polynomial, which normally has an M in the superscript, as just PL cosine theta. Okay, so in general, our solution will be uh, only a sum in terms of L because M is equal to zero. We still have our radial dependence in general and the theta dependence in terms of the Lachan polynomial and there's no phi dependence anymore. Before we superimpose it, uh, it looks something like this. This is our general solution. Eventually we'll superimpose it and then we'll, we'll have the sum. Okay, so we can begin by looking at what happens inside of the sphere. So when uh, R is smaller than A, where A is the radius of the sphere. And again, by physical constraints, if R is smaller than zero, then R can equal, uh, smaller than A, then R can equal to zero. And you can't have an infinitely high potential. So that means that we have to get rid of this term over here. Okay, so for our potential to be finite in the region R is smaller than A. Uh, we need to stop, we need to get rid of this term, which maybe to make it more explicit can be rewritten like that. If R is equal to zero, this term will blow up. So to stop that from happening, we're going to set BL uh, equal to zero. So this will simplify our solution further. It'll take us from this to uh, something that looks like this. And I've gotten rid of the superposition for now because we haven't explicitly used it yet. Okay, so this is our starting point based on uh, the symmetry of the problem. So the actual symmetry and the physical constraints when we're inside of the sphere. Applying our boundary condition. So uh, our boundary condition tells us that the top and bottom have different potentials. Uh, at the at the surface of the sphere. So when R is equal to A, we have that uh, it's equal to V naught when cosine of theta is between zero and one, and it's equal to zero when cosine of theta is between minus one and zero. And as usual, we can't, there's no way to satisfy this boundary condition with our current solution. So we're going to superimpose all of our solutions to build up a function that can satisfy this boundary condition. OK, 
Okay, so this is what, where we're starting off from. And uh, the idea is this function cannot by itself satisfy this. So we're going to superimpose uh, all of our solutions. So it means that we're instead interested in making the sum of all of these terms uh, equal to this. Okay, I won't rewrite it, it's just, it's still equal to that. And as before, we need to determine our coefficients, AL, and we need to do it by using the orthogonality of the Legendre polynomials to collapse this sum. Otherwise, we have infinitely many coefficients to determine. Okay, and in this case, uh, we're doing it for the case m is equal to zero. So, uh, okay, and in this case, because the m's are constant, we're going to use the orthogonality relationship when l can vary. And to do that, we uh, we multiply both sides by p l prime cosine theta. Integrate with respect to cosine theta. Uh, and then we're integrating from minus one to one. We do the same thing on the other side. Uh, so we have our sum. We've multiplied it by PL prime cosine theta. We want to integrate with respect to cosine theta. And we're integrating from minus one to one. So the difference between here and here is we've multiplied both sides by PL prime cos theta and integrated from minus one to one with respect to, to this. As before, uh, we can remove the constants from the integration. And we're left with this integral to evaluate. But this is the exact integral that we uh, showed for the orthogonality relationship of uh, Legendre polynomials. So this we know has to equal to this numerical factor. Okay, the whole integral simplifies down to that. So that we're left with a l a to the power l. We have our sum, our numerical factor, and this Kronecker delta. And as usual, this will kill every term in the sum except one when l is equal to l prime. We have a l prime a to the power L prime, two to L prime plus one. Every other term is equal to zero because of this Kronecker delta. Okay, and then this has to equal to our uh, boundary condition, which is this over here. 
So Writing this all out gives us this, and then we can bring uh, this over to that side. Uh, so we can rewrite this as AL prime over here. Just bring this over to this side, and then. Uh, using our boundary condition up here, we need to break up our integral into two regions, from minus one to zero and from zero to one. Okay, because this integral is currently from minus one to one, but VA theta phi has different values in those two regions. Okay, so we, we first have from uh, minus one to zero. And then from zero to one. Our boundary condition told us that between cosine, uh, for cosine between minus one and zero, this was equal to zero, our potential. So this term completely goes away. And for cosine between zero and one, this was equal to V naught, so a constant. So what we're left with then is our coefficient is in general uh, equal to this. So what we have to do then is look up every uh, form of the Lachan polynomial PL in terms of cosine theta and perform the integration. So what we're left with is inside of the sphere, our potential looks as follows. P1 cosine theta. E3 cos theta and so on. There's infinitely many terms in this and I've just written out the first three. Uh, you can look up why the, uh, the integrals come out this way. Um, and it's, it's fairly straightforward. You can use the table shown in the previous video to do that. So this, this is our expression for the potential inside of the sphere. In the next video, we'll look at the, uh, the potential outside of the sphere given our boundary conditions. And the, remember the key to all of this was using the orthogonality relationship to find an expression for our coefficients. And remember because of the chronicle delta, this is also equal to AL. So you can, everywhere you see an L prime, you can substitute it for L and it continues to be the same. L prime is just a dummy variable. And then in the next video, we'll see how we can do this again outside of the sphere.